Hi again, this is Andy, KE4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisperer and Lesson 14 in the Technician Operator Element 2 exam course. In this lesson, we're going to cover the T4B questions and go over operating controls. The T4B questions include tuning, use of filters, squelch, AGC, repeater offset, and memory channels. All right, you ready? Let's get going. What may happen if a transmitter is operated with the microphone gain set too high? Well, what might happen is the output signal might become distorted. And the microphone gain, kind of like the squelch, needs to find that sweet spot to, um, to prevent overmodulation of your signal. Now, if your voice is coming across, the air is distorted. Trust me, a ham is going to point it out to you and tell you to adjust your mic gain. So just remember, the output signal might be distorted. Which of the following can be used to enter the operating frequency on a modern day transceiver? The answer is a keypad or VFO variable frequency oscillator. So don't overthink the question too much. It's kind of an obvious answer. Now, one of the things that I highly recommend, especially for this section, is that you go to the newsstand and buy a copy of QST or CQ or some other amateur radio magazine and familiarize yourself with the features available on modern day transceivers. Uh, keypads, uh, CT CSS, DTMF, uh, those type of functions, what kind of squelches they have, that, that type of thing and um, just kind of familiarize yourself. If you're familiar with modern day radios, you'll have an easy time with this section. What is the purpose of the squelch control on a transceiver? Now, we've gone over squelch controls in previous lessons. The answer for this question is to mute receiver output noise when no signal is being received. So essentially, the purpose of a squelch is to mute your receiver unless the output noise from the signal coming in is above a certain level or you're receiving a signal of a certain strength. So it basically helps you from listening to static all the time and just helps you seek out the, the strong signals. What is a way to enable quick access to a favorite frequency on your transceiver? Now, like I said, if you went to the, the, the newsstand and bought uh, Amateur Radio Magazine and looked at the advertisements for the new transceivers, you'll see that there's a lot of memory involved in a lot of these transceivers. You store the frequency in a memory channel. Once again, it's a pretty obvious answer. Don't overthink the question. It's not too difficult. Which of the following would reduce ignition interference to a receiver? The answer is to turn on the noise blanker. Now your mobile transceiver should have one of these and this is one of those owner's manual type of, type of questions on how to operate it. Now reducing the squelch, trying to get down uh, ignition interference probably isn't going to do you much good and pretty much might just blank out everything. And changing frequency won't help much either because generally ignition interference crosses the whole spectrum. So the answer is turn on the noise blanker. Which of the following controls could be used if the voice pitch of a single sideband signal seems too high or low? Well, the answer is the signal RIT or clarifier. Now, what the RIT is, it's a little dial on your transceiver, and it stands for receiver incremental tuning, and is essentially a fine tuner. Now, if you remember a few lessons back, we talked about bandwidth and how radios, radio signals occupy space above and below the frequency on your transmitter. If your receiver's frequency is just a little high, than the, the frequency that's being transmitted to you, the effect that it has on the audio is that it makes the person talking sound like a chipmunk. Now, if you go the other direction, the sender sounds like they should be singing bass. Now, adjusting your RIT helps fix that problem. So basically, it helps your receiver tune in to the transmitted signal exactly so it sounds normal. What does the term RIT mean? And here, here's that question again. The answer is receiver incremental tuning. What is the advantage of having multiple receive bandwidth choices on multi-mode transceiver? Well, what this does, and the answer you need to remember, is it permits noise or interference reduction by selecting a bandwidth matching the mode. So if you're operating in CW or single sideband or whatever mode, different modes have different bandwidths. So CW has a very small bandwidth compared to single sideband, which has a wider bandwidth. So if you're just listening for, to CW, you don't want to hear all that other noise going around on around that bandwidth. You just want to hear the CW tone, and that's what that the advantage of having a multi multiple received bandwidth choice is on your receiver. You can select CW and what it does is it just focuses on the width of that CW bandwidth and cancels out all the other noise and lets you focus on the communication you're receiving. So the answer is it permits noise or interference reduction by selecting a bandwidth matching the mode. Which of the following is an appropriate receive filter to select in order to minimize noise and interference for single sideband reception? Now the answer is 2400 hertz, and this is one of those ones you probably should memorize. 
What these filters do is match up the mode with the appropriate amount of bandwidth as we described in the previous question. And it helps to remember, uh, the memory trick for this question is that single side bandwidth is big but it's not huge. And the answer is the second biggest number of the possible answers on the exam. Which of the following is an appropriate receive filter to select in order to minimize noise and interference for CW reception? All right, it's the same idea as the last question. The answer to this question is 500 hertz. Now, if you can remember that CW has the smallest bandwidth of the operating modes, the answer is the smallest number of the possible choices. So just remember 500 hertz for CW. Which of the following describes the common meaning of the term repeater offset? Well, the repeater offset is the difference between the repeater's transmit and receive frequencies. We've covered this a couple times in previous lessons. This should be reviewed by now. What is the function of automatic gain control, or AGC? The answer is to keep received audio relatively constant. So when your receiver receives a signal, the strength of that signal can vary from a thousand different things. It could vary from if you're moving in a vehicle uh, and a truck gets out of your way, you could get a, a stronger signal. The weather can change the strength of the signal, power surges, the atmosphere, a bunch of different things. So what the AGC is, it's a circuit that keeps, keeps the signal output of your receiver to your audio relatively even. So it has a nice, even, constant signal going to the speakers. And this does a lot of things to pretend, protect the circuitry in your speakers and your radio as well. So what is the function of automatic gain control, or AGC? The answer is to keep received audio relatively constant. And that's it for the T4B review, and now it's time for the quiz. So number 1 through 12 on your paper, and I'm going to go through the questions quick, so if you need more time, pause the video. When you're done with the quiz, go to handwhisper.com and you can check your answers there under the exam answers page under the T4B link. And with that said, let's get ready and take the quiz. Question 1. What may happen if a transmitter is operated with the microphone gain set too high? A. The output power might be too high. B. The output signal might become distorted. C. The frequency might vary. D. The standing wave ratio might increase. Question 2. Which of the following can be used to enter the operating frequency on a modern transceiver? A. The keypad or VFO knob. B. The CTCSS or DTMF encoder. C. The automatic frequency control. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 3. What is the purpose of the squelch control on a transceiver? A. To set the highest level of volume desired. B. To set the transmitter power level. C. To adjust the automatic gain control or D, to mute receiver output noise when no signal is being received. Question 4. What is a way to enable quick access to a favorite frequency on your transceiver? A, enable the CTCSS tones. B, store the frequency in a memory channel. C, disable the CTCSS tones. Or D, use a scan mode to select the desired frequency. Question 5. Which of the following would reduce ignition interference to a receiver? A, change the frequency slightly. B. Decrease the squelch setting. C. Turn on the noise blanker. Or D. Use the RIT control. Question 6. Which of the following controls could be used if the voice pitch of a single sideband signal seems too high or low? A. The AGC or limiter. B. The bandwidth selection. C. The tone squelch. Or D. The receiver RIT or clarifier. Question 7. What does the term RIT mean? A. Receiver input tone. B. Receiver incremental tuning. C. Rectifier inverter test. D. Remote input transmitter. Question 8. What is the advantage of having multiple received bandwidth choices on a multimode transceiver? A. Permits monitoring several modes at once. B. Permits noise or interference reduction by selecting a bandwidth matching the mode. C. Increases the number of frequencies that can be stored in memory or D, increases the amount of offset between receive and transmit frequencies. Question 9. Which of the following is an appropriate receive filter to select in order to minimize noise and interference for single sideband reception? A, 500 hertz, B, 1000 hertz, C, 2400 hertz, or D, 5000 hertz? Question 10. Which of the following is an appropriate receive filter to select in order to minimize noise and interference for CW reception? A, 500 hertz, B, 1000 hertz, C, 2400 hertz, or D, 5000 hertz. 
Question 11. Which of the following describes the common meaning of the term repeater offset? A. The distance between the repeater's transmit and receive antennas. B. The time delay before the repeater timer resets. C. The difference between the repeater's transmit and receive frequencies. Or D. Matching the antenna impedance to the feed line impedance. In question 12, what is the function of automatic gain control or AGC? A. To keep received audio relatively constant. B. To protect an antenna from lightning. C. To eliminate RF on the station cabling. Or D. An asymmetric goniometer control used for antenna matching. And that brings the T4B lesson to an end as well as the quiz. And now that you're done with the quiz, go to hamwhisper.com, check under the exam answers page, and find the T4B section, and you will find the answers to the quiz. Until next time in lesson 15, this is Andy K4GKP saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.